Chamber of Commerce representative coming to the room in this moment of like the reporters not knowing who to cover. Uh, well, yesterday, U.S. Chamber of Commerce uh, decided to slap a lawsuit on the Yes Men. So that is unfolding as we speak. So what is happening is uh, there, this, the film is screening tonight in Waterville. We were going to have one guy here and one guy in Waterville. The, the, the Yes Men that was supposed to be here has to stay in New York to take care of the lawsuit, but the other guy doing dub double duty uh, probably just introduced the film in Waterville and is racing here to do the Q&A afterwards. So, uh, when Mike Bonanno gets here, please treat him kindly because he's probably going to be like literally parking up front and running in the door and grabbing the microphone. So. Uh, anyways, the yes Men Fix the World. It's an hour and a half long. Well, you know, that's the, the thing is we've been begging to be sued for years. <laughs> and nobody has complied. Nobody has granted us our, our fondest wish. And, uh, and finally, today, you know, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, actually yesterday, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce um, offered to sue us finally. Um, <laughs> And I don't think we've been served yet, but they posted their lawsuit on their website, so they're clearly planning on serving us, um, you know, a lawsuit, which is just absolutely, uh, yeah, you know, finally somebody has answered our call. <laughs> I mean, it's going to be fun. We'll see what, what happens. I mean, uh, you know, uh, how much does a survival, co uh, survival ball cost? Well, there are plans, there are open source plans for surviving balls that you can um, access on Survivanet, which is the, the um, social networking site for survival ball enthusiasts. <laughs> and uh, the plans will show you how to make one. Materials cost around $300. Um, they're fairly expensive, mostly because of the amount of fabric that you need. It's 10 yards of fabric to uh, make a survival ball because, you know, the, you know, there's a lot of surface area there. It's not like a normal pair of clothes. It's like your six foot ball, six ball, six feet in diameter. And yeah, that's, you know, a lot of fabric. Um, and the fabric has to be airtight. So, you know, because it's all inflated by a fan and a helmet. Other than that, it's pretty easy to make. If you know how to use a sewing machine, then you can build one. Uh, the rest of it's like really easy compared to the sewing part, in my estimation. I'm not very good with the sewing machine, so I can do it, but you know. Um, zippers and stuff, that's hard for me. Um, so uh, if you do want to take a shortcut, though, to getting your own survival ball, you can get one of the ones we're using in the Balls Across America campaign. Uh, <laughs> Balls Across America is a campaign to use survival balls and, and popularize civil disobedience, um, particularly in the name of climate change. Um, we've been deploying them all over the country. We're going to have a few in Boston, I think, tomorrow, and we may blockade something. I'm not sure what yet. Can't say. Um, we'll definitely be using them Friday in Chicago. There's a crew of people going to be doing some kind of survival ball protest. They're really weird and funny for blockades because they're big, right? You know, you know, you need less people to like fill a doorway. Um, I mean, they're silly, so they're good for photo opportunities. Generally, they they're, they're mediagenic, and also it's hard for the police because you know. <laughs> survivable, where do you put the handcuffs? Um, it's, you know. So, I mean, so we're, we're, yeah, we're basically using them in protests all around, and we're going to be sending them to Copenhagen, and if anybody wants to adopt a ball, we have an adopt a ball program. For $1,000, you can actually adopt a ball, and you will get it after it's been used. But if you do have a $1,000, it will basically subsidize a, a, a survival ball, including um, legal fees for bail um, and, uh, and, you know, and getting it over to Copenhagen, you know, probably in some DC case, or, or, or for the, the uh, COP15, as they call it. Yeah, this is a major problem. We have a crisis 
in the media. And the crisis doesn't necessarily come from journalists being bad. I think it comes from the pressures of the profit motive on journalism and basically the decreased numbers of journalism you know, in paid jobs and uh, the deadlines that they face. You know? And so if they get a corporate press release, they reprint it verbatim. And this is exactly why we impersonated the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, you know, th th nobody's going to listen to us, but the journalists regularly reprint cha Chamber of Commerce press releases as if they're true. Um, and, and they're massive lies most of the time, you know? Corporations rethinking what they're doing. Well, I don't know, really. Probably not. But, um, I mean, whether corporations are rethinking what we're doing, what they're doing because of us, I don't know. We're hoping that a lot of corporations leave the Chamber of Commerce. Because, you know, corporations always have the profit motive to work towards. So, in a way, we can't hope for anything from them besides that. But since the Chamber of Commerce is suing us, which is clearly a useless activity that's frivolously wasting their, their money, um, we hope they quit. <laughs> I mean, a lot of, several corporations did quit the Chamber in recent weeks because of their position on climate change. And I think that that is, you know, something where it may have been motivated by their ideas of the profit motive. C companies like Apple, you know, obviously a lot of people who buy apples would be annoyed by Apple um, being part of an organization that's lobbying against climate change legislation. Um, but other organizations, you don't expect it from, like PG&E, you know? This is a company that is involved in power generation. Of course, they do own a lot of dams, so who knows, you know? Um, but, you know, overall, there, there are, the day after, the day after we made our announcement, uh, as the Chamber of Commerce, and we announced that the Chamber was finally going to change their opinion on climate change and stop spending millions of dollars lobbying is, against climate change legislation, another company left, Mohawk Paper, paper company. And so, I mean, ho I hope that we had some effect. Probably not, because these decisions take a long time to, to make. They don't make them overnight. But, um, you know, I, I think that what we do and the way that it works is to, to kind of reinforce what a lot of really great activists are doing um, on a number of different levels, whether you know from social organizing up to changing laws, um, and and we're kind of like uh, cheerleaders of that movement. We like help boost morale, and we help to try to push the ideas to places that they wouldn't normally be. You know, by using humor and things like that, getting it in the media. So, yeah.